Welcome. I'm Gary. That's Vana. And I, yep. <laughs> yep. She is. That's Vana right there. Um, and this is the <laughs> second in the series, the Fiber Talk Starter Series. Uh, Fiber Talk Starters, uh, number two. This time we're going to focus on preparing our ground cloth. So last year, last time we talked about the different kinds of ground cloth, and now how do you prepare it to get ready for stitching? And uh, as each time, the uh, this uh, series is sponsored by the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas, and they're a needle art, art shop that specializes in cross stitch, punch needle, and needlepoint. And she's working hard to uh, grow that needlepoint collection, and uh, has classes, retreats. She has a lot of retreats and workshops. She's yeah, she's very active. She has a lot of classes. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's very active. Uh, so check out the website for that. And then she ships worldwide. And um, so go to shepherdsneedle.com and explore the online site, shop. And then, yeah, check out that uh, workshop and class schedule because she's very active there. A lot of stuff going on all the time. And uh, if you're in Little Rock, of course, drop in and, and visit. But uh, right there at the bottom of the screen, shepherdsneedle.com. Uh, is uh, is sponsoring this and making this possible, so we appreciate it. And uh, yeah, check that out. Um, yeah, I, I was checking out. Yeah, just the other day, I thought, wow, she really is is active with the workshops and stuff, which is great. I love that. Uh, yeah, so, me too. Yeah, so we're going to talk about preparing the ground cloth, and we'll we'll talk mm -hmm. about Ada linen and needlepoint canvas, which are the three basics. I mean, well, there's not much else other than that. So. Um, so first is size. How do you figure out the size? Now, what tell, tell what you what you how you go about it. We'll see how it compares to what I do. Um, when I get ready to stitch a design, I go and look on the chart to see um, what the height and the width of the stitch piece is, just the stitching, and then I take that. Because, you know, a lot of charts will give also what the dimension, the size is based on what the model was stitched on. But a lot of times I don't stitch um, on that called for fabric or that called for count. So I get the height and the width of the design. I go to crossstitch.com to the, then I click on the tools and the stitch calculator and I put what the height and the width is, what my stitch count fabric may be. And I add either two inches or three inches for finishing and framing and hit the calculate button and it spits it out how big I should cut my piece of fabric. And so that's what I do. Yep. And, and I, now I go, I do the math part, but either way, uh, there is, there is a math way to do it, but yeah, that's the easy way. And then, yeah, you're pretty much error free because you make a math mistake and you cut a cloth a couple inches short and oops. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. But now, you're, like your your local needlework store, Shepherd's Needle, for instance, uh, they'll they'll be expert at that. They'll take that chart and they'll uh, be able to figure it out based on the uh, thread count for your ground cloth, and then add uh, add to it. But yeah, if if you just have like a, a a yard of fabric and you're going to stitch on it, then yep, uh, cross was it yeah. crossstitch.com, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Crossstitch.com, but you can also get an app on your Android or iPhone. They have a crossstitch calculator app, or if you just put in Google and um, put crossstitch calculator, it will spit it right out. What yeah. you know, you can you'll there's like pages and pages of them, so it's not like some kind of rare thing that you can't find. Right. So so that's important to do. And, and you mentioned that you add two inches or three inches for framing. And I think that's mm -hmm. what, that confuses people because mm -hmm. you, there's two things. There's your design size. That's how big the actual design is going to be. But then you need to put, I, I go with three inches uh, for framing. And some people think, well, I just need to add three inches all the way mm -hmm. around. No, because you're only adding an inch and a half on each side. Mm -hmm. You need to yeah. add you need to add six inches to each dimension to get a three inch border. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And that I think that confuses people more than anything because nobody wants to buy more linen than they have to, but um No. And like I can tell you for finishing, there's like people that do not want to like if they stitch things side by each on the thing on the p on a larger piece of linen they don't want to put like four inches in between each 
motive. And I, yeah. it's like, I have to have that much to finish, right. <laughs> to finish, especially if it's a spear or a circle, because that takes more to form a, a you know, more linen. And I understand where people don't want to waste or, you know, I know that linen is expensive and stuff and people don't want to do that, but believe me, considering if you waste a little bit of linen, it's much better than wasting like 20 hours of work on something, yeah, you know? Yeah. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> any, anybody who watches your finishing tutorials, you if, if you watch them at all, you'll immediately see why you need at least two and probably three inches all the way around. You'll immediately see it in the finishing because you'll see where those two or three inches go as you're working through mm -hmm. a finish. It's a, it's, it's very right. obvious. And, and you'll, and, and if you even think about it for a second, you'll realize if that isn't there, you can't finish it. I mean, you're, you're, I can't finish it as right. As beautifully as what I could. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work. So, um, so three inches on all sides. Mm -mm. So that's six inches. Right. Long way, uh, horizontally and vertically, you got to add six inches to the linen. And it'll seem like you're buying a lot of linen that's going to waste. But like you said, uh, weeks and weeks of stitching that you can't do anything with compared to that extra linen. Right. Yeah. So that's important. Okay, then the next thing is wrinkles and creases. Mm -hmm. And this is where I get a little obsessive. And you not so much, but we each do our own thing. Um, so wrinkles mm -hmm. and creases. So on linen, uh, I don't do much ADA anymore. Actually, I don't do any. So I don't really know what that's like. I assume it gets creased too. Yeah. It, yeah, because, I mean, it's just a cloth. But, like, this is, I, I'm obsessed. Uh, I just get really worked up over getting rid of these creases. Like wrinkles that come out of uh, stitching. Like if you start with a clean, wrinkle-free piece of linen, and and then stitching, you're going to wrinkle it. But you're not going to mm -hmm. add creases like this. And these are mm -hmm. the ones that drive me nuts because you really just can't pull that out. You see that? If I pull that tight, you can still see that creases there. So, yeah. So I I go to some length, great lengths actually, uh, to make sure that that crease goes away, and it's unavoidable. I mean. Shops cut a fat quarter or something, fold it up, put it in a bag, and it's going to get creased. You know, right. But, uh, but now I go to great lengths. So I put it in a, um, a Tupperware with just a little dab of Dawn soap and tepid water. Don't use hot water because you don't want to shrink the fabric. But tepid uh, water. And then I let it soak and then uh, for a while and then uh, come along after not you know half hour or so. And then I'll rinse it out in tepid water to get all the soap out of it. Then I roll it up in a towel to soak out most of the water. I don't wring it out. Like, don't do that. Don't wring it out. Just kind of squish it out. And then, uh, uh, then I put it in a towel and roll it up to soak water out of it. And then, and then I uh, use an iron and steam and, and iron it dry. And mm -hmm. that gets rid of these wrinkles. It, but most important, it gets rid of the creases. So that when I start okay. stitching, so when I start stitching, then it's a crease-free, wrinkle-free piece, and any creases or, or any wrinkles I add are going to be easily ironed out after the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's what I do. Okay, you want to know what I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the when I'm preparing my ground cloth or my whatever, I, what I do is. I will edge it after I've cut my piece out. I will edge it and I either use a um, serger or I will just use a zigzag stitch on my machine. And then I will go over to my ironing board and I've married Ellen's best press it, iron it, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. But does that get that gets, gets the creases out? Yeah, Mary Ellen's gets the creases yeah. out. Mm hmm. Yeah, see, I, I guess now, I, I don't know why I go to the yeah. extra length, but I do. Well, I did that with my queen sampler after I picked it out. You know, I re when I picked everything out and restarted, I did your Gary Parr wash and, and stomp and all that. And it is very, <laughs> it does make it very nice. <laughs> yeah, it does. And I, wash and stomp. Yeah, and somebody gave me that. <laughs> I don't remember who it was. Somebody gave me that procedure, but uh, wash and stomp. That's what we're going with. We're branding it, wash and stomp. <laughs> But, um, yeah, somebody told me how to do that. 
so that's what I do, and then I have a clean thing. And then, yeah, we probably should have talked about whether to square it up or not, uh, whether to square yeah. up and, and edge it, because I edge, uh, I edge it all the time. I zigzag it on my machine, but yeah, I, I have to have all four sides edged unless there's um, unless it's uh, this side, which I forget now what it's called. Oh yeah, the salvage, the, the salvage, salvage yeah. edge. Then you don't have to do that, but everything else gets edged. And I mm -hmm. zig, mine zigzag. Yours, of course, your fancy machine does salvage then, right? It does the uh, serger. Serger, yeah. Serge, yeah, not yeah. salvage. Serger, yeah. 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 And I square mine up. You don't, Do you worry about that? No. <laughs> um, I'll be honest. <laughs> you don't. I'll be honest. I follow the linen thread. So... I don't really have to square up when I cut, I, I cut with my rotary cutter and I lay it out on my, I have, see, I, that's the one big thing about because I'm, I quilt, I have a huge cutting table. Oh. And so I lay it all out flat on my cutting table. And then I lay my ruler right along the line. And I try to like, you know, if it goes off, I'll pull it to get the, you know, and I'll follow that line. And so I don't really have to, I don't really have to square it. And if I'm in a hurry and I just want to do it quick and dirty, I'll just do it and and then I'll zigzag it and I do not. I do not yeah. square it like you do. Yeah, I don't I don't know how important it is. Now see, I'll I'll cut mine with a with a, a scissors or rotary cutter and a ruler like that. But I don't have mm -hmm. a big I don't have a big quilting table where I can lay the whole thing out. Most of them mm -hmm. are too big for that. But I will right. do that. But then I want to go through the extra process of squaring it up. So then I will take and pull threads. Let me see if I can show that. So I will pull threads uh, on this thing until I can pull uh, a linen thread the full length of, of, the lin of the side. So I'll keep pulling these things until I can start at the top and pull one all the way down. Mm -hmm. And and then then I know that I have uh, an edge that is square all the way around down. And then then I'll go through with a rotary cutter. Then I go and cut all the fringe off, so that I know oh, that I'm, I I'm dealing with a square edge. And then that's when then I'll zigzag it. But uh, okay. sometimes you have to pull quite a bit if it's been cut at the shop really crooked. Like if somebody did a quick and dirty uh, cut, then mm -hmm. um, you'll have to pull it. But you can see, I guess you can kind of see the fringe. But you get a fringe, yeah. obviously. And so then that's what I do. And then I know that I have a square piece. But I just keep pulling them until I can pull one the full length. And you can see how that has a little edge to it. And yeah. And then that gets cut off. And then I surge that. But and, yeah. and I don't, you know, I'm not sure. The more I think about it, the more I think it probably doesn't matter uh, in the big picture. Because it's just going to be cut off anyway for finishing. And Right. But I, I just like to start with the thing square. So And you know, that's okay. You know, I feel like that's nice. I, I really do. When I listen to how you do it, I think, gosh, I am just uh don't do it like that. And but I feel <laughs> like that would be very nice to have it. I mean, it is what it is, you know, everybody's different. Yeah. Yeah, there's nobody saying you have to do it and somebody's gonna slap a, a fine on you if you don't do it one way right. or the other, but um, right. I just, I just want to know that when I'm done, before I start stitching, that I have a square fabric. I know exactly what the dimensions are on all mm -hmm. sides. I it's squared up, it's edged so it won't fray, and there's no wrinkles. Right. And then, then I, that's when I feel like I can stitch it and know that I'm starting with a complete clean slate, and any wrinkles I add, I know will get ironed out afterwards, and. Like if it's on a stretcher, if it's on uh, scroll bars, you're probably not going to add any wrinkles. But if you do it in a hoop, it's unavoidable that you're going to put wrinkles in. So right. then, then some people will use fray check. People always ask, well, what about fray check? Mm -hmm. I've used it, but I use it on little pieces, like four mm -hmm. inch pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a fan. I don't. I don't like it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not anything to do with fray. I just don't like it. I mean, I'm just not. Kind of, it's heavy. It gets. I just don't like it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good way to do it or whatever. Right. If that's the way you like to do it. That's awesome. But yeah. I personally do not like it. 
Now, I'll, I'll do it on, I've done it on small ones, though I, I haven't in ages. Matter of fact, my bottle of Frey check is probably rock solid. It's so old. But, um, <laughs> but I, I've done it on small pieces. And, and to, to me, it's a lot of hassle. So I'll, like, I'll go on the top of the sewing machine or the washing machine, put down some paper towel, lay down the, the piece, and then you go along with that gluey stuff and put it on the edge. Uh, it's just, and then, you know, I think, geez, I could have edged it, zigzagged it faster. And yeah, so, yeah, I just don't, yeah, I don't I think don't it's worth like it. it. And on big pieces, time you run that thing the full mm -hmm. length. Oh man. Like if you, if you took yeah. this piece here and tried to fray check yeah. it, you know, it'd be, it'd take you forever. Not worth it. Yeah, it would. Yeah. I don't, and you have to wait for it to dry right. and mm, I yeah. don't like it. Yeah, I don't, I don't either, but. You know, again, if that's what you want to do, nobody's stopping you. Uh, freight yeah. jacket, go for it. All right. So, um, so then, then once you have that, then you're ready to stitch. Now, uh, needlepoint canvas is a little different. Not a lot, but a little different. Needlepoint canvas is actually easier to deal with because it's so rigid, mm -hmm. and and so and and it's really easy with a rotary cutter to cut right in between two uh, uh, mm. wefts or wefts Thread. or whatever it is, two strands, yeah. it's real easy to put a rotary cutter in between there and stay there the full length. It won't wander off and, and just stay there. And so uh, for me, that's put a, a straight edge on here, line it up, make sure the straight edge is covering the part you want to keep, but line it up and then do a rotary cutter and just trim that right off. And that's a quick thing. Uh, and you'll get it. You'll get it square. I mean, it's almost hard not to get it square, but um, uh, that's easy. And then I think the most. Um, uh, I think an important part of of that is to put uh, tape on the edge to edge the uh, edge it. Mm -hmm. And so I put. I do too. Yeah, and I just use regular artist tape. I mean, I just went to the art store and bought. And this is pro artist tape. You know, generic artist tape. And uh, so I put artist tape on, and this is, what do I buy? Um, oh, I don't know, it's one inch, yeah, three quarter or one inch tape, just so you get enough overlap like that on both sides. And to me, that's, that's important because for two reasons, two reasons. One, when you're putting it on the stretcher bar, to me, that's a better surface to put your thumbtacks, and it will hold better than if you put it in the holes of the canvas. It will hold better. Right. And then mm -hmm. the other is you've now covered that ragged, that, that ratchety edge that you trimmed. You've mm -hmm. covered it with a smooth edge, and then if then you're not going to snag threads. Like you can see this, this is a Debbie Rowley, uh, um, her opal design. You're not going to uh, snag these um, uh, unusual uh, threads on on the edge here by when you're dragging it like this long piece here. You can see how uh -huh. I could sn I could snag that and pull it. Oh yeah. And um, uh, I I used to not worry about it, but I had a, a piece that I was working on where I was using um, flare, and flare is just a miserable uh, thread. It's it's beautiful and it really works well, but it's also a miserable thread. And I snagged it. I was at the end of a fairly complex stitch, and I snagged that thing on the edge mm. of the of the uh, canvas because I hadn't taped it, and it ruined the thread. And I couldn't hide it. I ruined the thread, and I had to pull it all out. And I said, "All right, for the moment it takes to tape it, worth it." And and most yeah. shops most shops will put tape on. Most shops when they cut a canvas to size for a, a needlepoint project, whether it's painted or charted canvas, they'll have a tape. A lot of them have a tape that has their, their company name on it and phone number and so on and so forth. And then they have a machine that will tape it for you. They'll, they'll, it just oh. automatically does it. So um, uh, most good shops will have that. But if, if you're just buying uh, big chunks of canvas, then I tape it. It's worth it. Yep. And don't use masking tape. Please don't use masking tape. That stuff over time, that glue, that uh, masking tape, when you go to take it off, it's just sticky, icky stuff. Mm. It's, yeah. 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 Now, what about frog, frog tape or 
Painter's that tape. Blue, yeah. Painter's tape. Yeah. Yeah. You can use that. Okay. Yep. Because right. that will come off and that doesn't leave a residue. Yeah. I think artist okay. tape sticks better. Um, mm. I think it sticks better. And unless you're unless you're a needlepoint factory, uh, you know, one one roll of <laughs> one roll of this will last you, you know, a small lifetime. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I think this sticks better, but yeah, you can use painter's tape. Uh, that blue stuff, the 3M blue stuff or the frog tape, mm -hmm. either one. Yeah. Yep. It'll work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just don't okay. use masking tape. Masking tape is just yeah. nasty. Yeah. Yep. And you can't believe I get that all the time. Do you? My finish tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That does it. Okay. That's it? That's all. All right. There we go. All right. That's okay. number two. We'll be back uh, in a couple of weeks with the third one in the Fiber Talk Starter Series. And thanks to every, uh, thanks for watching and shepherdsneedle.com for all, well, actually all your needle point. We've got cross stitch, punch needle and needle point and lots of classes and workshops. So shepherdsneedle.com, Little Rock, Arkansas. Thanks. Thank you.